Just outside Yellowstone in the heart of Montana's Rockies, Big Sky boasts more than 5,800 skiable acres in one of the most remote locations of any North American ski resort. The mountain offers abundant terrain for skiers of all ability levels, and its iconic lone peak makes for a footprint that can't be mistaken. But there's more to a ski resort than just the physical attributes. So how does Big Sky stack up as an overall package? In this video, we'll go through Big Sky's overall mountain experience, and then we'll go through how the resort compares in our North American rankings. If you find this information helpful, be sure to help us out by liking this video and hitting subscribe so you don't miss any of our content. And if you have suggestions for future videos, make sure to let us know in the comments below. And special thanks to Ski TNB, who provided all of the tram and Lone Peak terrain footage in this video. Be sure to subscribe to his channel in the link below. If you're looking for excellent, high quality snow, Big Sky is hard to beat. The resort sees some of the best North American ski resort accumulation in an average season and holds its snow well thanks to consistently cold temperatures. The resort employs early season snowmaking to ensure a resilient base layer of snow and has expanded operations in recent years. Big Sky's terrain diversity is also hard to top. The resort offers abundant terrain for skiers of all ability levels, which is rare, even among Big Sky's destination competitors. Multiple mountain areas, including some fairly high elevation ones, offer beginner terrain, a rarity among large western ski resorts. The eastern part of the resort is the most mellow, with a couple of areas that are great for beginners, including the Southern Comfort and Lewis and Clark zones. While there are no green trails going from the Satellite Madison base to the main Mountain Village base, most beginners should be able to handle the blue Fast Lane Connector Trail just fine. Intermediate options are plentiful as well, with a mix of varied groomers, glades, and bull runs. Some of the best blue terrain is located right near the main base, with the Ram Charger, Swift Current, and Thunderwolf chairs each serving numerous intermediate runs and glades. For lengthier blues, guests will want to check out the Lone Tree and Six Shooter lifts. If it's intermediate bull terrain you're looking for, the Powder Seeker Zone is the place to be. For relatively advanced skiers, there's a lot to like too. Steep, ungroomed terrain abounds here. These trails range from demanding mogul runs, to tight glades, to tough pitched bulls. All of the areas with good intermediate terrain also have very good advanced terrain, but experienced guests should be sure to check out the Challenger and Headwaters lifts for some excellent near treeline bull skiing, as well as the remote Shedhorn and Dakota areas for the last remaining untouched powder stashes that don't require hiking to find. The resort also boasts a range of small to large freestyle features over numerous terrain parks, including one terrain park consisting entirely of natural features. But where Big Sky really stands out is in its extreme terrain. The snowfields off Lone Mountain are unlike any other in the country. Making your way to these will get you extremely demanding terrain, sandwiched between lines of exposed rock. These runs can become quite steep and formidably narrow at times, and if you take the wrong path, you'll be going over cliffs or rocks to get to the bottom. Recently, Big Sky introduced the triple black rating for its most formidable runs. This terrain is extremely dangerous or prone to avalanches and can seriously injure you, or worse, with one wrong move. As a result, Big Sky highly recommends bringing an avalanche beacon and shovel on all of these runs and requires doing so on the Big Calore, North Summit Snowfields, and Upper A to Z Chutes. The three aforementioned areas are limited access and require signing in and out with a patroller to ski. If you're caught breaking the rules on either of these, you'll be banned from the resort for life. Be sure to invest in some avalanche gear if you plan on doing these runs. Don't expect easy access to any of Big Sky's triple black runs. The only direct triple black lift service comes from the Lone Peak Tramp, which only carries 15 people per tram car and has historically generated lines of up to a few hours long. But as of last season, the access terms for the tram have changed. Big Sky has now removed Lone Peak tram access from base ticket and pass products, including partner passes such as Icon and Mountain Collective, and is requiring an extra purchase add-on sold in daily increments. Those who don't opt for the Lone Peak tram add-on will miss the resort's toughest lift service lines, highest skiable elevation, and most astounding views. Lone Peak tram access must be purchased at a day of variable rate, typically between $30 and $100 per day, so it is not cheap. 
As a result of its intense terrain and exposure, the Lone Peak Tram is subject to somewhat variable openings. But for the 2022-23 season, the extra cost add-on will only be triggered by walking through the tram gate, meaning that those who plan to ride the tram but are unable to for whatever reason just won't be charged. The resort's other triple blacks are located at the uppermost headwaters area, and they are perilously difficult to reach. Getting to these lines requires a technically exasperating, wind-exposed hike across a narrow path with a rock wall to the left and a steep drop to the right. But if you didn't buy a Lone Peak Tram Pass, these lines are your best bet for extreme terrain and they often hold powder stashes for days. Across the rest of the resort, lift service is decent but lacking in some dimensions. Big Sky's four bubble lifts, including the impressive, heavily publicized Ram Charger 8-pack and brand new Swift Current 6-pack, provide comfortable seating and welcome isolation from the elements. Multiple other resort areas boast high-speed lift service as well. However, some major mountain sections and all condo-focused areas maintain slow, fixed-grip lift service. Some of these lifts are either short or primarily expert-focused, but others, such as the Iron Horse Lift, which provides the link from Big Sky's main mountain pods to the Madison base side, should ideally be upgraded. Big Sky doesn't always see the crowds that other Rockies resorts get thanks to its remote location, but there are very few redundancies in Big Sky's lift setup, and when there's a powder day or a busy weekend, the mountain struggles to handle the crowds. Alternatives to major lifts are typically slow, out of the way, or difficult to find, making them undesirable. Many resort lifts don't have any alternatives at all, creating major choke points. At a ski area of this magnitude, there should really be more options. Partially as a consequence of Big Sky's size and relatively recent acquisitions of the previously independent Moonlight Basin and Spanish Peaks areas, getting around the resort can be tough. It takes relatively flat traverses to get between major mountain areas. The trails to and from the Dakota and Shedhorn areas are essentially catwalks. Signage is inconsistent. Some signs provide clear information on how to reach noteworthy lifts and trails, while others are poorly placed or omit important details. Many signs point to the resort's mountain village base but don't tell you what lifts are down there, which can be a bit confusing now that multiple base areas exist. And given how heavily publicized the resort makes its two main out-of-base lifts, the Ram Charger 8 and Swift Current 6. But while things become straightforward enough once you figure out what Mountain Village is, very few signs point to the former Moonlight Basin and Spanish Peaks bases unless you're already in those areas, making it tough to find them unless you really know what you're doing. The former Moonlight Basin's Madison Base area is unintuitively located above the lifts that service it and not accessible from most trails on that side of the mountain. If you don't immediately cut to the Green Lazy Jack and Cinnabar trails at the top of Six Shooter or Iron Horse, you've already missed it and you'll need to take another chairlift to get back up there. On mountain facilities could use some work as well and are limited compared to most of Big Sky's destination competitors. The resort offers a convenient on mountain complex at the Mountain Village base with multiple dining options, but other large facilities are inconveniently placed difficult to find or impractically fancy for a day of skiing, either requiring reservations or charging absolutely atrocious prices for food and drink. Given how large Big Sky is, you really need to be careful about where you are if you want to stop in for a break. The resort does feature snack bars and bathrooms at some major lifts, however, not all of them are marked on the trail map. Lone Mountain's jarring terrain gives Big Sky its one-of-a-kind look. But the resort offers other incredible views as well. Lower areas look onto lines of mellower tree-capped mountains, while upper areas have direct lines of sight to other extreme-featured snow-capped peaks. Despite buildup at the bases, the resort features multiple isolated areas that feel completely removed from the outside world. In addition to incredible views of Lone Peak, the Shedhorn and Dakota areas offer views of the ultra-exclusive members-only Yellowstone Club giving most people the closest taste of that resort they'll ever get. Big Sky offers multiple nice but expensive lodging options on site. Options span the entire base of the mountain and range from hotels to condos to exclusive clubs like Spanish Peaks and Moonlight Lodge. The Saddle Ridge and Powder Ridge condos are great choices for large groups and reasonably priced if you book early enough before the season. All somewhat cheap alternatives for smaller groups are at least a 10-minute drive from the mountain. The relatively close town of Bozeman offers very cheap lodging, but requires at least an hour's drive to get to the resort. 
The most convenient parking options cost money, but the more out of the way free parking lots are served by shuttles from the base. Big Sky boasts enjoyable bars at its Mountain Village base and in the surrounding area, but don't expect the same extensive nightlife you might find at some other Rocky Mountain resorts. Big Sky does have a few problems that may turn some people away, but the resort gets the fundamentals right. With quality snow, enjoyable slopes for all ability levels, and some of the most extreme skiing you'll find anywhere. It's also worth noting that the resort plans to address many of its lift, crowd flow, and on-mountain facilities opportunities in the coming seasons. However, lift ticket prices have risen over the years and are now some of the priciest in the nation. The extra cost tram add-on brings Big Sky's one-day access cost to around $200 to $300 for adults, with the total price rising as high as $329 on peak days. This is absolutely absurd for any mountain, even one with terrain as unique as that off Lone Peak. A single tram access day may be worth it for those who really want to ride the Lone Mountain Summit, but competing mountains offer similarly unique terrain for a far lower cost of entry. Now let's go through how Big Sky stacks up in our overall rankings. Given the extra cost for tram access, We've scored Big Sky both as it stands with and without the Lone Peak Tram against our 10 category mountain score. Big Sky sees very strong snow totals each winter and preserves snow well, and gets a 9 in this category. Big Sky is a pretty consistent mountain as far as conditions go, but some of its more unique high alpine terrain is subject to closure throughout the season, and the Tram sees more variable opening schedules than Big Sky's other lifts, and the resort gets an 8 for resiliency without the Tram add-on, and a 7 for resiliency with the add-on. Big Sky is huge, with a 5,850 acre footprint, and the resort gets a 9 for size. Big Sky has one of the most well-rounded footprints we've ever experienced, earning a 9 for terrain diversity without the tram add-on, and our highest score of 10 with the add-on. Big Sky has some of the most extreme terrain in North America, but it's almost exclusively accessible by hiking or the tram, and the resort gets an 8 for challenge without the tram add-on, and a 9 for challenge with it. Big Sky's lifts are high speed in most key areas, including four comfortable bubble chairs, but some lifts are still slow, and the resort gets a 6 in this category. Big Sky does not get as crowded as more centrally located Rockies competitors, but its lack of redundancies results in some significant choke points and the resort gets a 6 for crowd flow. On Mountain Lodges are okay, but below what they should be for such a high class resort, and the resort gets a 5 for facilities. Big Sky is big and fairly confusing to get around with lots of unintuitive situations, and the resort gets a 3 for navigation. And finally, mountain aesthetic. Big Sky feels a bit moneyed in certain areas, but Lone Peak is a jarring, one-of-a-kind backdrop, and the resort gets a 9 in this category without the tram add-on, and our highest score of 10 with the add-on. These categories add up to an overall score of 72 without the tram add-on, and 74 with the add-on, placing Big Sky 13th in the Rockies and 14th overall. Big Sky has the best combination of snow quality, terrain diversity, and overall footprint we've seen pretty much anywhere, but it isn't as polished on the logistics as many competitors. On the bright side, many of the issues that hurt Big Sky in our rankings are fixable, so we wouldn't be surprised to see it rise in our rankings over the coming years. For more information on Big Sky and over 70 other North American ski resort destinations, check out peakrankings.com. See you for the next one.